One of the most special places in America is Florida's Space Coast. It is here from this unique geographic location that history has been made time and time again. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. Every NASA launch space flight with a crew, beginning with Project Mercury in the early 1960s to the end of the space shuttle program in 2011, have departed from Kennedy Space Center or Cape Canaveral. Scores of unmanned military and civilian rockets have lifted off from the Air Force Station. And with commercial space flights and space tourism not only the future but the here and now, the Space Coast has been thrust back into the international spotlight. Located a short drive east of Orlando, Florida Space Coast is home to Cocoa Beach, the closest beach to Walt Disney World. You'll find the nation's East Coast surfing capital along with one of the busiest cruise ports. But the Space Coast isn't just about rockets and the salt life. You'll find relaxing historic villages here where you can shop, dine, and get in touch with the local art scene. Quiet can be found on the grounds of a monastery that features the three largest granite statues of the Buddha in the state of Florida. And a state-of-the-art observation tower allows visitors to take in a bird's-eye view of the coastal area just south of where the rocket engines ignite. Today we're exploring Florida's Space Coast giving you a rundown on things you should do when you visit. All of that and much more straight ahead. Fuel your quest for inspiration at Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. From its humble beginnings inside a simple trailer at the dawn of space exploration, today's sprawling complex covers over 40 acres and welcomes more than 1.5 million visitors every year. As the top space attraction in the U.S., this is the place where the past, present, and future of space travel come alive. Take a stroll through the famous Rocket Garden, board a bus for a trip to the Saturn V building, learn about the early pioneers of the space program at Heroes and Legends, and stand side by side with Space Shuttle Atlantis, one of the most awe-inspiring exhibits on display. The Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex is a full-day experience worthy of some planning in advance. I've created a comprehensive guide on what you should know before visiting the KSC Visitor Complex. You can find a link in the video description. Just outside the south gate of Cape Canaveral Air Force Station is a small museum worth a short visit. At Sand Space History Center, you'll find displays for each launch complex on site at the Air Force Station. The displays have tons of historic facts, photographs, and artifacts that help explain the significance of what happened at each pad. Staff and volunteers of the museum are a wealth of knowledge who are eager to share their experiences seeing launches up close. When you go, look for the SpaceX Launch and Landing Control Center in front of the building containing the museum. There's a shady picnic area between the two buildings. Sand Space History Museum is free, but donations are always appreciated. Located in downtown Titusville is a museum full of artifacts that have been donated by individuals, astronauts, and other space workers. 
Exhibits inside the American Space Museum include astronaut suits and working launch consoles to a large model of the space shuttle on the pad and countless artifacts from the earliest days of the space program. A stop at this museum is highly recommended, especially if you don't have the time to devote to the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. An extension of the museum, Space View Park provides an anchor point for the U.S. Space Walk of Fame. It honors those who have made the space program possible over the decades with monuments, mission plaques, and bronze handprints of six of the original seven astronauts. In addition to taking a stroll among the many monuments, the Riverside Park has a boardwalk, a sheltered pier, and is an excellent location to view launches. Tucked away in a secluded area of the MEMS community is one of the greatest hidden gems on the Space Coast. Down this dirt path you'll find positive affirmations on hand-painted signs attached to trees. At the end of the road, the tree canopy opens up to reveal a 30-acre oasis home to a Buddhist monastery. The White Sands Buddhist Center is open daily dawn till dusk, with meditation services held every Sunday morning. Visitors come from all over to see three of the largest granite statues of the Buddha in Florida. We first came here over five years ago when this spot was not on anyone's radar. The statues are just as amazing to see in person now as they were then. Whatever your beliefs, the serenity you find by walking the grounds or stopping for a few minutes to sit by the reflecting pond can't be denied. I consider White Sands to be one of the most serene places on the Space Coast. Tours are available by making arrangements prior to arrival. Up to a hundred people a day visit White Sands during peak times. An offering plate is never passed here. Donations, though, are welcome. The famous Cocoa Beach Pier was first built in 1962 and extends 800 feet over the Atlantic Ocean. Back in those days, it was known as Canaveral Pier, and a one-of-a-kind surf shop had a location here. More on that in a moment. The pier is a good spot to view the ocean and the beach below. There are a few bars and restaurants to choose from, a hot dog stand, and a gift shop. Definitely the place to see and be seen. This section of the beach is very touristy, but if you've never been to the pier, I highly recommend checking it out. A few blocks from the ocean and a median as you enter downtown Cocoa Beach on A1A is a tribute to the city's most famous native son. Kelly Slater learned how to surf in the waves off nearby 4th Street North and went on to become the most successful professional surfer in history, winning an unprecedented 11 world championships. The nine and a half foot high bronze statue was built to withstand 140 mile per hour winds. Locals often decorate the statue for the season, so it's always a pretty rad photo op. Just be careful crossing the road. Some say you haven't truly been to Cocoa Beach until you experience Ron John's Surf Shop. This internationally known brand might have been founded in New Jersey, but this store on A1A in Cocoa Beach is the flagship. Inside, it has over 52,000 square feet of retail space. Just about every big name brand in the surf business can be found here, along with some smaller ones too. This location operates 365 days a year and is open 24 hours a day. 
Across the street, you'll find the Florida Surf Museum that operates through generous donations. On display is an impressive surfboard collection as well as artifacts that help preserve the unique history and culture of East Coast surfing. Cocoa Beach is one of the premier surf towns in the world, and this museum does a good job of telling that story through rotating exhibits. Take the causeway over to the mainland and our next recommendation, Historic Cocoa Village. This entertainment, dining, and shopping district traces its roots back to the mid-1800s and has become a popular destination for visitors and locals alike. All types of eateries, brew houses, boutiques, antique shops, and galleries are complemented by narrow tree-lined streets, creating a village atmosphere. Make your way down US-1 to the historic O'Galley Arts District. Hear the fascinating empowerment story of the woman who owned the most iconic house in town. Or take a tour of the many murals that add character to this charming place. We're on Highland Avenue and nestled in between these two buildings is something you have to experience when you're in O'Galley. Treat yourself to something really special an out-of-this-world dessert from Joan's Perfect Pie. Folks drive from all over Central Florida just to have one of these sweet, flaky treats. Downtown Melbourne is another shopping hub you should experience on the Space Coast, with more than 20 restaurants to choose from and one-of-a-kind shops and boutiques, plus Helen Blaze's Brewing Company. You can't go wrong by spending a day in downtown Melbourne. There are plenty of natural spaces where you can enjoy the beauty of the area. Mira Island National Wildlife Refuge was established in 1962 when NASA acquired 140 acres of land, water, and marshes around Cape Canaveral. Today, visitors can catch a glimpse of gators, shorebirds, and other animals on the seven-mile one-way Black Point Wildlife Drive. Early morning and late afternoon are prime viewing opportunities. Canaveral National Seashore is a pristine barrier island of undeveloped seashore featuring Native American shell mounds and thousands of species of plants and animals. Operated by the National Park Service, visitors can explore the Eldora House Museum, one of the last surviving structures of a community that existed here in the late 1800s. Playa Linda Beach on the park's southernmost end is a popular location for viewing launches at Kennedy Space Center and the Cape. When rocket launches happen, the best seat in the house can be wherever you are on the Space Coast at the time. There are a number of parks like Space View Park in Titusville and Jetty Park at Port Canaveral that are popular spots to view launches. But if you want to take your launch viewing experience to a new level, ride the elevator to the top of Exploration Tower overlooking the port. Coming in at seven stories tall, this observation platform allows you to see all the way to Kennedy Space Center. While it's a great place to watch a rocket liftoff, the building is sometimes closed for certain launches. On the back side of the observation deck is a map where you can read more about the area attractions. That's it, our list of the top things to do on Florida's Space Coast. Which one is your favorite? What place do you want to visit the most? Let us know in the comments. We always love hearing from you. There's so much to do in this area, we couldn't possibly list everything, but hopefully you can use this list as a resource in your trip planning. 
A complete guide to everything mentioned on this list, including addresses, operating hours, and websites, can be found at chadgallivanter.com. Follow the link in the description of this video. If you haven't done so already, do us a favor and hit the subscribe button along with ringing the notification bell so you're always kept up to date. From Space View Park in downtown Titusville, see you next time.